So Akroma Molly is pretty nice. Dominic Ban, Dominic Molly. Easy. That's also a really good thing to learn how to play RTA. Watch matches and predict two things. No, actually predict three things. If you watch a match, you predict who is going to be... I feel like the people that know how to draft and know how to uh, pivot is very strong. For example, this draft is a very nice option of a pivot. Where you can see, okay, all of a first pick, you're still having the potential of going first pick, second pick, doesn't matter. Oliver is kind of all-round enough to be able to contest speed, of course, because it's speedy, but also be good in a bruiser fight, because it's just cycling turns, that kind of shit. It is good enough in a bruiser fight. It's not the best, but it, it is okay in a bruiser fight. Miles and Praha are pretty hard counters directly on the two units on the field. They also have nice synergy. Uh, the only thing is that uh, person two, like the right side, could have Leo that relatively easy. Then again, a Praha and an Oliver are kind of okay into a Leo as well. But the moment he goes for two more turn two units, making the pivot with a Miang and a Tassarion is actually pretty solid. So let's see how that actually works out. The thing is, the Leo would get fucked by Dark Panda. Yes, but the Dark Panda was not on the field. That's something that uh, people, like, if you look at a draft, Dark Panda's not on the field until this point. So you cannot hindsight draft. Like, there's too many people looking at the whole draft. It's like, yeah, but you should have picked that. It's like, at that moment, that was not on the field that you would have countered. So, you cannot hindsight draft too much, I guess. But let's see who has the upper hand here. Dragon Dance can't really kill anyone. Can this stick? Most mollies are 100 rests, which is this one as well, it seems. But it does stick in the end. Doing a lot of damage. Yeah, this is just solid pivoting. Like, the whole pivoting point made it pretty solid. Okay, that one is dead, though. But I feel like it's still okay for Judas to win. He should have actually reset the uh, Molong. I'm not sure if he just didn't or what was the case there. But Miles is actually pretty good into a Feng Yang. Yeah, Bra is also pretty good in both styles, definitely. So you could say, like, yeah, Feng Yang can solo this. Um, no, no. Even if the Thessarium was dead, I doubted that Feng Yang can solo this. Because Miles is just really, really good. And Pra and Miles deal a lot of damage. So, yeah, pivoting is very important in this round. Let's look at the rematch of this. So in this case, Guts also did a pivot. Pivot, like, mainly pivot was um, knowing, okay, El Mimo plays heavily turn two. Plays a lot of facets. I go for an early Tessarion. I'm not sure if I would go that early of a Tessarion. It can work. El Mimo doesn't really respect it by going cleansers at all. It just goes more passive. El Mimo draft is literally five freaking passives. And then going in for a Feng Yang at the final pivot, which I like. I do like the Feng Yang. But it is tricky with the Robo. Like Robo would have died there. Like normal RNG Robo would have died there instantly. So you already lose a unit straight off the get-go. Okay, that is a nice proc out for El Mimo. But Monkey's gonna get the Sarion. Yeah, that's the point where I think El Mimo didn't pivot well enough. He just spammed his own stuff too much into where he was like, okay, I have a Tessarion against me, but I don't need any cleansers or I don't need any immunity. Well, it seems to me that he apparently doesn't need it that much as well. <laughs> Ooh, that is tricky. Does he actually lap with that Fang? No. Doesn't proc out either. Okay, do we have Daydream? We do. Can a Feng Yang win this? I feel like Feng Yang could actually win this. But it is tricky. It is difficult. Especially if that Holly Berry starts uh, armor breaking. The armor breaking is the nasty part. Okay, does get a heal, but... Oh, does procs on those marshes. Okay, I'm curious to see what a Feng Yang can bring against these two. Feng Yang will pretty much destroy it in two hits. See, Feng Yang, good pivot, good pivot. Ooh, okay, did land that armor break, but self cleanser, always nice. And Feng Yang has the path of healing. Even if um, that 
Holly Berry was vampire right now, he would probably not win this. Because every time he actually lands on a... Like, the only way for Holly Berry to win this is armor break proc crit again. That would be the only way of winning against a thing, yeah. So, once again, got solid, solid draft. I like that. And that's actually something you see throughout the matches a lot these days. You see a lot of, like, first picks into, like, heavily speed, but then pivoting towards more turn two or more all round towards the third and or, like, the fourth and the fifth pick. You have hope here. Oh, that's actually the guy I played against. Wait, it looks more like the guy I played against on the right side. Am I correct? No, actually not. So, wait, he was doing molly first picks while having a yan hong like that's also the thing like the the guy i just played against he's on the left side he did a molly first pick if you have a yan hong i would not like unless you have like crazy turn two runes in your like yan hong is not great and that kind of shit. but i wouldn't really focus on these kind of units if you have that kind of units like in the back like it, I wouldn't really molly first pick if you have like let's say you have a nefties would you molly first pick no like you, you don't need you have so many other options that are probably better for you like sure depending on what other runes what other that kind of stuff but apparently his uh young hong is kind of squish hello dice and in this case the draft on the upper side is a lot better than the draft on the bottom side like a fun thing is oliver is pretty bad next to awusa because Oliver just cycles himself out of immunity, Marsha's free to kill it at some point. It's the same thing as putting a Wusa next to a Diana. Like, one turn of Diana and your Wusa shield is like instantly gone. So wait, let me check what the bans were here. Bans here in this case, Carlos and Gyu. Hmm, yeah, that's, that's kind of a harsh draft in the first place. He was kind of, I'm not really sure what the Yan Hong was doing in this case. Uh, looking at a Wusa and a Molong into a Martian uh, Nana is pretty good. But how he finished the draft was not that good at all. Like, if you would finish the draft knowing 100%, like, okay, the fifth I can just ban. Yan Hong is not the same way of doing that. Um, if he would have picked, let's say, an Antares in slot 4, and Terrace would have given you like, okay, you have to ban it. If he goes and Terrace and Carlos in slot 4-5, then he has to be like, okay, can I actually ban the Antares or Carlos? Or do I have to ban out that Wusa? And then the Giyu pick would have probably been something else. Okay, so that's also like he saw like, okay, I'm losing with Yao and Hong, so I'm first picking Molly again. That could be a way of misusing your LD. Like, it doesn't necessarily mean that a good LD has to work for you. Like, if you just misdrafted in a certain way, then it's maybe not that great. Tian Lang that early is also not that great. I like that Wusa pick in there, but Wusa's going to be hella banned. I do like that Rika pick, and I do not understand why that Rika was not banned. But he, I guess he's expecting to one-shot that Rika. But you cannot one-shot that Rika. So you kind of have to strip that Rika and do an S3 on that with uh, Oliver. That is pretty much your only way of surviving this what come. But the issue is, Marsha can still one-shot something and give uh, Nana an extra stack. And now we're just TOA Harding, like, from the get-go. We're, we're done. Like, we're literally done already. This is just TOA Hard. Dominic damage is nerfed by quite some, that he's not healing that much anymore. So, by that point, it was just TOA hard. Could you say, like, oh, unlucky because Oliver missed its shit? I think the Masha might have still been able to pick up and make some kills after that. And he goes for the email. Hmm, gingerbread. I'm still not really sure about the gingerbread. Niche-ish units that most of the time does not work like how you would like it to work. But it does make sense in what he's drafting. Miles and Molly make sense, both of them. Jackson makes a lot of sense. Sav and CP. Yeah, those actually, the whole draft, both sides, makes quite some sense. The big thing is who's faster, because if you, like, the Savannah actually makes a lot less sense if she's reset at all times by the Olive, which is somewhat likely to happen. So in this case, the match is all about Marsha versus Miles. Like Marsha versus Miles with like filler in the field. Who can kill like the other team faster on those two units? Because Oliver is going to do no damage except for just being annoying and make sure that there's no skills of except for the uh, Marsha, of course. 
So yeah, who of the two pillars can kill most? Let's say that that sap was something else. What would it have to be to be good enough to make sense in current draft? I feel like a wind unit does make sense, but I'm not sure about the choice of going for Savannah. CP would have been decent, I guess, but let's say he went Ginger Branch also trash, I agree, but let's say he would have had a Diana on the field over there. Then he would have had to force focus Diana with a Miles, which takes like a pretty long while to get rid of. Cigar is a decent option. Cigar is pretty fast. Cigar is actually that's actually a pretty nice pick. Cigar is pretty nice. Um, another option would be probably Shinza. Charlotte. Charlotte also gets reset. You need something with a pass, like Cigar without speed, and therefore is okay. Probably without speed. Depends how you build the Cigar. If Cigar ends up just being like reset, it doesn't do anything. Provoke is okay-ish, but it's, like people are already hitting that anyways. Aaron's also goes, like you see a lot of these picks these days. You see three speed contesting-ish units. You see the enemy going full turn two. And then the two final picks of the speed contesting player are also turn two picks. So let's see if that pivot worked out for him. We do have a ban on Kinky. We do have... The issue that I see here with the Thessarion, Thessarion seems nice, but the big issue is that you have no sustain versus a Molly plus a Josephine, which is a very heavy sustain field that you have over there. So you have to hit that. Yeah, no, you, you just lack sustain. You already lose a unit. So Thessarion is a nice pivot-ish, but it's no sustain. It doesn't do anything. It's not enough. And also he had a Kinky. I think Kinky wouldn't do enough either. But I think he was pretty much bound to lose either way. It doesn't really change too much. Okay. Yeah, and the unit is dead now as well. So. I think he would have lost either way. Yeah, that's not really helping you giving it a shield. If someone Hollyberry first picks, I wouldn't go to AOE uh, units with multi-hits. Because the Holly Berry can parry every individual hit. If you do an AoE hit of 3 times per unit, you're hitting 12 times. 12 times 15%? It's very likely to happen. It worked for, uh, fine for me. It can work. Oh, if you start with an S3, that does actually help a lot. Oh, you just had a... Did you ban the Holly? You didn't. Wow. How does this work? You were somewhat lucky for not getting hit on, I guess. I guess with the combination of that was pretty nice. Wait, what did he ban? What did he ban? He banned that Tessa. I would have banned Shizuka here. Because either way, you have two units with Oblivion on the field, but one has AoE Oblivion. You might as well keep the two Oblivion units that are individual Oblivion units, rather than AoE Oblivion. Also, picking a Fire Ryu into two Oblivion units... I'm not too sure about that point. So that was kind of a weird pivot into saying like, okay, we kind of want to contest speed, but we have three units non-contesting speed, and the fourth unit I put down is a setup for contesting speed. This not useful as well. Like, you either have to full, go full turn two, so don't go for the, uh, the Vanessa, don't go for the Robo. That could have been an option. Or you actually put units that... No, I, I think you cannot recover from that having the third on the field. Like, I'm not sure if the third is already a, a solid pick or not. So if you want to actually speed contest in this slot, what you could have done is in slot 3 and 4, you go for a Vanessa segment. Because Vanessa segment counters pretty much everything that's on the field on the left side. If he would continue to go on with a the same draft that he does right now, probably would uh, like pivot his draft slightly different than as well. But you could have a different draft set up in that case as well. So... You don't really, you could still go Robo in that slot if your segment is fast enough, you probably outspeed something on the left, you would win from that. 
Um, if your robo is will, you have some options on that as well. So with that, I think you have a lot more options than the third in this case. So that's just like the way you pivot and the way things work. Like let's say you want to go heavy, heavy turn two. I would probably go for instead of a third, I would go for Juno. And instead of the Vanessa, I would go a Raccoon or a Molly. Like if you go Juno Molly there, or you go um, Juno Raccoonie there, his last two picks don't do too much. You simply ban out the um, Sean and you're probably good to go. Combination of the Pure Vanilla with an Oblivion skill 2 and Shizuka is somewhat deadly, but I think he would be fine. Okay, this is a pretty interesting one as well. I think we currently see a lot of Molongs, and I think Molong is pretty good in current meta. Molong is still weak into AoE CC kind of stuff, but Molong is very strong into turn 2. On the right side, we don't necessarily have too much turn 2, but it is somewhat countering that. I'm actually pretty curious to see if this draft works. I expect a Molly ban, because Molly is the only sustain on the left side. And he's trying to out-sustain you. Right side ban, probably CP? No. So Akroma Molly is pretty nice. Dominic ban, Dominic Molly. Easy. That's also a really good thing to learn how to play RTA. Watch matches and predict two things. No, actually predict three things. If you watch a match, you predict who is going to be banned on both sides, who is going to win, and why is he going to win. If you can predict these three things, like time and time again, and you can't say like, oh yeah, he's winning because of RNG. No, you actually actively look like, okay, what are the winning conditions? for player A or player B. And if you get to notice these, if you get to analyze these, but also get to like recognize these, that's why you actually improve your RTA by a lot. And that's also improving your drafting by a lot. Because you remember like, okay, I saw this and this, and they won because of this and this against that and that unit. I can replicate that in my draft right now by picking this, banning that, and I expect him to ban this as well. So like the prediction of what enemies ban, but just, predicting it from like other drafts that you see it's a very good tactic if you want to improve an rta actually for me personally like um when you couldn't farm and watch rta at the same time i actually had a second uh i had a what's it called second account on my pc just scrolling through rta all day like legitimately watching people in best like sometimes i'm like oh i want to watch like drafts from these and these people specifically anything like that um yeah th those kind of things just help a lot i'm just spamming the same draft and improve a lot so far i'm not necessarily sure if you improve by spamming the same draft well at least you know what it wins against and what it doesn't win against but th that is a fair thing like like for example back in the days when uh people playing league you you had one of those friends that always picked the same champion right but he mastered the living shit out of it like he could play against like heavily counters and he would destroy his lane still. Just simply because he knew every interaction with his main champion against every champion there. And that is actually a pretty big factor as well. If you know like what are winning factors or losing factors against everything, and you know how to pivot your way around that or play against it, you can actually play it pretty well. Depends on your rune uh, quantity if you can have many versatile drafts. Yes and no, because you can actually technically saying if your draft is heavily winning, you can win with C3 runes against G3 runes. Plus the fact that uh, turn 1 units use pretty different runes than turn 2 units. So sure, having a better rune depth allows you to rune up more units good. Definitely helps. But I think there's a lot of people that have good runes they're just not using because they're like, oh, it has no speed, fuck this. I'm, I'm just speed chasing, fuck it. If you, if let's say Leifert would play like, oh, I, I no speed, fuck that, I'll just sell it. He would have like, he would be C1, probably. I don't know. No, just kidding, he would probably be way high. But just by the idea of it, like just speed chasing is not the way. And if you actually save all of your high potential runes, it's not necessarily easy to get good rune that, but to get pretty versatile runes and give like and give and create options for units, it's gonna come up there.
Someone said Levert rehab the quad speed to get a fat room bullshit. I don't believe that. I absolutely don't believe that. Like, Levert is not stupid. Like, Bile means Levert. The way he plays, he's smart as fuck. He knows all of his counters. He knows every interaction. He knows what counters what. Like, Levert plays... Like, he picks Annabelle's and four counters. That's every draft. Like, no matter if he spams the same draft four times over, or like 30 matches over, that means that he counted four units with four units on his field, plus an Annabelle. Like, the man legitimately knows how to counter his shit, and therefore he's that high up. It's the same thing, for example, with Pinkroyd. Pinkroyd is just spamming and Terrace and four counters. That shit is legitimately working. Why? Because A is a very lucky player and is a Terrace box every fucking time. He cuts away with that kind of bullshit. But B, he knows his counters. He knows what counters what. And he actually prepares like, okay, if I pick a Terrace, you counter a Terrace with X. I pick Y because you picked X. It's not just simply spamming like, oh, I'm just spamming a stupid draft and getting a high rank. There's a lot more to it than that. Panda's first pick is something you don't see. Like, at all. To a ragdoll third. Is that like a slow third if he mostly spams Leo? Leo banned, you're pretty sure. Uh, I'm not sure if this is... Yeah, that's a very slow one on that. I guess that's... A pretty well countered setup by Hyde, I would say. Also, the synergy of a Praha and a Miles is really nice. Because of the speed buff, you will see that Miles is going to do shit ton of damage. The only issue is that if that thing starts proccing too much, you could have had an issue, but... That is fine. Daydream, yes. So we were doing about 7k's before. How much damage is this going to be right now? 11. Like, that's so much damage. Like, just straight up 11k damage. For just an S1. It's... That's a lot of stuff. Pontus, if he does proc out, it's going to be dangerous, but... I guess this is one of those spam picks by the player at the bottom. And it just doesn't work into everything. So that's the thing, like, some people like to draft the five exact same units, or, like, they have, like, eight or ten exact same units. They keep spamming that over and over. Is that necessarily bad? No. Can you get a decently high rank with that? Yes, definitely. It kind of depends on A, which units, B, your room quality, and C, which people you play against. It's not even the RNG in the match, but it's literally the RNG of who do you play against. Because player A, you will always clear with it. Player B, you will always lose against. And there's actually a bunch of... Um, streamers that we have like no offense to them like if they like to play that way it's definitely fine i wouldn't personally like to play with like a monster box of like 10 or 20 um but as you can see they can actually get like a decent high or actually pretty high rank with them but then you can also see them if you watch them for a longer time they have days where they win a lot and they have days where they lose a lot and it's just depending on what kind of people they queue into like not even like sure the rng is a decent factor but the factor of what kind of people they play into is a very big factor because player A, might, they might destroy it like times and times again and has absolutely no clue of how to counter it or doesn't even have the units to counter it, which is very possible. But player B might actually hella destroy them every, every time. They just see that person it's like, oh, I just have to pick this weird unit in first pick and they already like get confused. Because they literally, their whole box is counted by that one or two units. Magnum first pick into me. Well, I, when Absa was playing with uh, Nora and a bunch of Dodders and Nicks, I literally first picked Seimei into him. I just went Seimei, Veramos, and Juno. Good luck with your dot team. Like, literally. Like, good luck. It's cancerous, fuck you. There's no way if you... I have the best three counter dot units. There's no way if you only play the dot team you're going to win. It's absolutely impossible. Hmm, this one is actually a first where we go heavily, heavily speed contesting both sides without pivot. I actually want to see the same of Oblivion interaction. Because does same make Oblivion one turn when it lands and then it sticks one turn? And then you can apply a two turn one when it has one turn Oblivion? I'm not sure. Because everything is one turn right now. Okay, it goes for it. Yeah, one turn Oblivion. So at the one turn Oblivion mark, you can land the two turn Oblivion. 
But the issue is that after she takes a turn right now, she will get rid of the Oblivion. So that means that everything else will take heavily healing until you apply your next Oblivion. The Oblivion is going to start as a one-turn Oblivion again. That is pretty interesting. It's an interaction I actually haven't really seen. Like in this case, he's still going to lose, but... That's sometimes some of those interactions which you don't see too much, especially like the interactions between two LD units. Or the interaction which is pretty funny as well, uh, Celia and Josephine. Celia and Josephine has also a pretty strange interaction because Celia at the start of her turn sleeps something. But then Josephine doesn't cut and take the turn. Now Celia makes her turn, you can choose whatever you want to do. And then Josephine takes the turn. Whether you actually slept someone Afterwards, now if you slap someone on your passive, Celia will take or uh, Josephine will take a turn after you, no matter what you do. So that's that's just weird interaction. Like you, you would think like would you maybe get cut and Josephine takes a turn right away when your passive starts? No, it works after that. It's some of those LD interactions that you don't see too often, but it's good to know for like the the special occasions that they do happen.